What's going on guys? My name is Mark Wagner and today I'm going to be showing you step by step how to build a basic but converting Shopify store. I'm going to be covering a lot of super important things so be sure to pay attention, take some notes, do whatever you got to do. Let's get into the video. Okay, so the first thing that you need to do is start your free 14 day Shopify trial, which you can do by using the link in the description of this video, which I would really appreciate because full disclosure, I get a little bit of money every time I get a trial sign up. So basically you just put in your email address. Please don't email me. And I guess you can, but why would you want to? All right, and then make a password. Now you're going to need to put your store name and honestly if you can't think of it right off the top of your head this doesn't really matter because you're going to change it once you buy a domain name later. So for the store name we're just going to put flying pig. I really hope that's not taken. That's taken. Flying pigs. Uh. Flying pig one. There we go. Alright so flying pig one is now open for business awesome okay so for this i don't really know why it matters but um i'm just gonna say that i'm just playing around and my current revenue is zero so damn it all right i gotta do this really quick okay so we are in basically i just had to input like my address and my name and all that but um now my store flying pig one is open for business and i'm going to teach you how to set it up so um yeah that's my dad's name in case you were wondering i have to put him on all my like shopify stuff because i'm not 18 and technically you have to be 18 so that's fun but anyway um the first thing that you really need to do is select a theme so i would just recommend going with debut because honestly it's very clean it's very simple a lot of drop shipping stores use it but that's not necessarily a bad thing um personally it's my favorite free theme so let's go to customize and just set it up a little bit okay so i'm just gonna set it up a little bit how i would personally do it if this was my store and i mean i guess it is so let's say you're in the men's fashion niche that's a dope picture we're gonna use that all right can't really click on it there we go so um flying pig i usually don't put like text there because i think it looks kind of unprofessional but that's just me i could do um flying fashion is here that is awful and i would totally not copy me here but um you can do you okay so instead of featured collection here for your um main collection name i would put something like weekly best sellers basically because no one really knows what the collection is and every single drop shipping store in the world uses featured collection so um now we're going to add some more sections and basically these are just gonna be um, the types of products that you're selling. So let's say we're selling watches. By the way, don't do that, but um, that's just one collection. And then another collection could be jewelry. And then my third collection is going to be shirts. So we're just gonna add another collection here and basically what that does is it allows all right gotta remove that and that and then it allows people to just go to your website and then scroll down and they can see all of the types of products that you offer um, which is really beneficial so we'll just customize the footer really quickly so that um you know it looks good looks good flying pig the best fashion store for the best flying pigs all right that's pretty good <laughs> but um now what we're gonna do is we're gonna go to theme settings and we're gonna customize a the colors and b the typography which is basically just the font that you want to use the reason why i recommend customizing this is because like i said debut is basically the the baseline uh, Shopify theme and so many dropshippers use it 
and you really want to like separate yourself from other drop shippers. So let's say that um, my brand colors are going to be lime green. Like, oh, this is going to be awful. All right, lime green. That looks bad. <laughs> and um, blue. All right, blue doesn't look too bad. Okay, so we're going with lime green and blue. And then we're gonna go to typography and we're gonna change the um, the fonts. That honestly looks kind of cool. So we're gonna save that and then we're gonna change the body text as well. All right, we're just gonna go with beefcakes, which is what I chose uh, for the other one. So our social media, basically it's just gonna come up on the bottom and you can like click it um, if you want to visit your profile. So we're just going to do facebook.com slash flying pig, even though I do not have social media, but you should because, um, you know, that's where you're going to make your money. So type that in and then leave these. And basically what that allows you to do is, um, a customer can go on your product page and then if they click a button, which these are enabling, then um, they can just share it to their social media feed. So that's cool. The site is saved so we can go back to Shopify and um, basically just get some products on here and continue to set up the site. All right, so the next thing that you're gonna wanna do is you're gonna wanna go to your apps and the most basic app that you're gonna need is um, a drop shipping app. So if you're drop shipping from AliExpress, then there's really two options. I guess there's three, but um, the main two are Oberlo and DSers. And personally, I prefer DSers, but I just started using it, honestly. So um, we'll see how this goes. <laughs> Hopefully it should be all right. Basically what these apps allow you to do is they allow you to sell products straight from AliExpress. So when you go to AliExpress, you can click a button and basically it imports it to your Shopify store so that you're selling that exact same product. All right, sweet. So we got DSers up and running and I'll show you how to use that in a second. But for now, we're gonna go back to apps. Go click here, yeah. All right, so now you basically need three other types of apps. One of them, is an email app so that you can send email marketing to your customers and mainly abandoned cart emails. And basically what that is, is when someone goes on your website, they click add to cart in the product and they go to their cart, they fill out their information, but they don't end up buying the product. So what an abandoned cart email allows you to do is it allows you to email that customer and be like, hey, you forgot this product, you know, come check out. And that saves you a lot of money. So um, an email app that is good for beginners is MailChimp. And that is what I will recommend using. I'm not gonna be installing it because that's not the point of this video, but um, MailChimp is a great app that you need to have. There's also a ton of um, apps specifically designed for abandoned cart recovery. So you can always get one of those as well. Another type of app that you need to have on your website is a reviews app. So there's, um, there's a lot of options for this. One of those is Ali Reviews, which basically allows you to import the reviews that are on AliExpress for a certain product and allows you to put those reviews on your website for your product. So um, that's fun and all, but the free plan kind of sucks for that. So I would kind of stay away from it unless you want to pay. But um, Another good app is Yapo Reviews. And um, the only downside of this is you can't pull the reviews from AliExpress with Yapo, so you either have to write them yourself, which I mean, you gotta do what you gotta do as a beginner, or you can get customers to um, write reviews for you, which probably isn't gonna happen if you're just starting your store. But um, anyway, so Yapo is also a great review app. There's a couple of other apps that you may want to consider downloading, and one of those is Nice. Nice allows you to show orders that your customers have placed 
um, to other customers who are currently viewing their site. You may have seen this before, but basically when someone's just looking at your product, it'll come up with a little notification at the bottom of the screen that says this person and this city just bought this product. And that's a great way to get social proof. So customers are like, oh shoot, like people are actually buying this, like it's going quick. Now I need to get mine. So Nice is an app that I would totally recommend getting, but I'm not gonna be getting it because again, that's not the point of this video. So a third app that I would recommend is Sticky Cart. What Sticky Cart does is it makes it so that when customers are on your product page and they're scrolling down, there's always gonna be an add to cart button there staring them in the face. And you can even make it like shake and like bounce around so it attracts even more attention. So the, um, the benefit of this is that customers don't forget like the call to action. Like when they're reading the product description or your reviews or whatever, there's always gonna be an add to cart button there. And it just helps increase conversions overall. Another app that you should have on your website is some type of exit intent email pop-up. So you can choose Privy, you can choose Wheelio. There's a whole bunch of options, but personally, I prefer Privy because it's free plan is pretty good and um, it just seems to convert the best for me. So basically what Privy does is it pops up with this little box. I don't know if you can see it right here and it says, don't leave. You can take this coupon for X percentage off and then all you have to do is enter your email. So A, what you get is you get people completing their checkout because now they get a coupon and you also get people's emails. So that allows you to do email marketing and a whole bunch of other cool stuff with that. All right, so here's the fun part when we actually get to find products and import them into our site. And normally I would recommend that you do a ton of research here because this is one of the most important factors to your success. But for now, I'm just showing you kind of like how to do it. So let's say you wanna add something to our watches collection because like I said, we're a men's fashion store. So we're just gonna search in watch and that should bring up hundreds of results. So now we're gonna sort by orders, which allows the most popular products to be shown first. And let's see what the most popular watch is on AliExpress. All right, so let's see this one, okay. Rose gold leather, I seriously doubt it's real leather. But anyway, we're just gonna click add to DSers on the right of the screen. All right, so this says that it was a success, so we just gotta go to my products and see it pop up. So now we're just gonna click publish to store, and then we're gonna be able to go on products right here, and it's gonna pop up. From there, we can edit the description, the photos, all that that you definitely need to be doing when you import a product from AliExpress. All right, so the watch showed up here on my products, and as you can see, the product name is absolutely horrible. So uh, we gotta change that as soon as possible. So what we're gonna do is look at the product. This is like, oh, it's like a quartz watch and it kind of has like a star pattern it looks like. So we're gonna go Galaxy Quartz Watch. Obviously this is just an example but um, that's what we're gonna go with. So I don't really like having all these pictures in my item description. So we're just gonna erase like all of that. I don't like that. Um, and then we're gonna write something like, watch these stars wherever you go by wearing, uh, wearing our galaxy quartz watch this amazing watch is built using <laughs> using the finest grade leather and quartz on earth now i wouldn't recommend blatantly lying like i did because aliexpress products are not the best quality but um you know you gotta do what you gotta do <laughs> So um, bullet point list, leather band quartz capsule. I don't know if capsule is the official word, but you know, it sounds right. And then um, analog clock. All right, that's gonna be fun for now. And um, 
now we're good we just need to change the price and then um save this really quick so now i'm just going to change the price of all of these and we'll say that it's ten dollars and it's on sale from twenty dollars so it'll be a 50 percent off sale all that good stuff all right there we go the next thing that we need to do is we need to get a logo and a brand strategy set up because for a logo, you're gonna need it for social media, you're gonna need it for your website, you're gonna need it for a lot of things. And if you don't have any skill in design whatsoever, then you can hire someone on Fiverr to make you a clean ass logo for like $5, maybe 10. So um, just go to Google Images really quick and we're gonna get a logo because I'm not paying someone on Fiverr to create a flying pig logo for me. So, um, pig. All right, let's see what this comes up with. Um, let's go to tools, color, transparent. And, all right. Tough choice, huh? All right, this is good. This is gonna be our look. <laughs> so now we're going to go back to um, online store and then click customize and now we're going to be able to put our logo in the sections of the website that it needs to be in. So for logo images we can just go to upload and click flying pig. I don't know if you can hear it but my Mac is being really loud right now and it's kind of scaring me but um, okay. That's all right. <laughs> um, just set the logo width to whatever it needs to be. I think that looks pretty clean, honestly. So that's okay with me. Um, then go to theme settings and then click favicon. And basically that's just that little picture in the top left. Most people don't have it, but um, I would recommend having it because it just helps with branding. All right, so we set our favicon as well. And we have a clean ass logo, I think. That guy's He's pretty dope. All right, so now we're gonna customize the theme because this looks like absolute poo-poo and um, yeah, that's not gonna convert well. So um, let's just add our website's background image and add our website's logo and see how that looks. Perfect, so this looks a lot better if you ask me. Honestly, I think that looks pretty good and um, that's gonna be acceptable for now. So we're just gonna go to our product page. It currently looks like this. Um, so not that great, but not that bad either. And I really don't like that text, but um, it's okay. Cause you know, I, I don't really care about this store. So uh, let's just go back to the product page and I'm gonna teach you a couple tricks with your pictures. So you really wanna use pictures like this for your product page. Uh, pictures that have white backgrounds just tend to do better because it's very clean. Um, it's just very professional overall. If you go to any website, they're going to have white backgrounds. So um, if it doesn't come with a white background, like all of these, then basically what you need to do is you need to go to a website. I have no idea how this got open, but um, oh, that's where we stole the logo from. <laughs> Uh, so anyway, you just need to go to Google and type in background burner. From here, you can just use a normal picture that doesn't have a white background and you can just cut out the background around it. So that's not going to work and uh, we got to touch it up a little bit here. All right, so it's not perfect. I would never use that, but um, it'll work for now. And you guys get the idea of really how easy it is to cut out a background. So for download, you're gonna wanna do it as JPG because that takes up a lot less space as PNG fi fi files. And um, so your website's gonna load a lot faster. So just download it as JPG, and then we can go back to our product page eventually and just click add images and find that photo and upload it. All right, so now you need to create your store's trust pages. And we did this just by going to online store 
and then down to pages and click add page. So you can have something like your frequently asked questions and basically you can just include all your shipping information, your refund policies, all that type of stuff that a customer will be looking for can be included in your frequently asked questions. And then you also need to create a privacy policy and you can just do that by searching privacy policy Shopify on Google and then they'll basically come up with one. Um, they'll just generate a privacy policy for you. All right, so basically all I had to do was Google privacy policy Shopify and just fill out a couple information. You know, my company name, Flying Pig. I use cookies, my company website, all that type of stuff. And then Shopify just emailed me a free privacy policy. So it took me about 30 seconds overall. And then we're gonna make a new page for my privacy policy. Now we're just gonna go get it from my email because they just emailed it to me and I'll be right back. All right, so Shopify just sent me this, which is my privacy policy. So we can just go back to my page and then save it. So besides the privacy policy, like I mentioned, you do need a page that mentions your shipping info, your shipping times, your refund info, and basically just all the policies that you wanna have as a company. All right, so the last thing that we need to do is go down to navigation under your online store and click main menu. Now you can always add other things here, like um, a link to track your order, a link to your privacy policy, your frequently asked questions, whatever you wanna put up there. But um, the only things that I would really have on your main menu is your home, your catalog, and maybe like a track your order thing. The rest can just go below on your footer menu. However, I wouldn't say catalog for your catalog. I would just say all products because again, basically every minor Shopify store just uses the default options set by Shopify. And you really just wanna change that and customize it a little and make it your own. Uh, now we're basically done with the website. We're just gonna take a look really quickly and um, see how Flying Pig 1 is going to perform. All right, so the Flying Pig is now open for business. As you can see, my website looks super clean. Took me like 20 minutes to do, and this is going to be the next six-figure store. Sorry, don't mean to flex on y'all, but um, Flying Pig is, it's the next big thing. Anyway, as you can see, it was so easy just to create a basic Shopify store and basically importing products, writing product descriptions, that kind of stuff takes the most time. But actually building the site is really, really easy. All right, guys, I really hope you enjoyed this video. Shopify is definitely not the easiest thing to figure out, especially for a beginner, but I hope this video helped. Just be sure that you're focusing the majority on your efforts on marketing and not your actual store because at the end of the day, your marketing is what is going to decide if you succeed in this business. Be sure to hit that big red subscribe button on your way out and I'll see you in the next one.